So, um, for the next, however long, for the next period of time, um, we're going to uh, have the opportunity to meet most of the Malajo team and to hear what is a Malajo. Maybe some of you have heard of it. Um, I keep seeing it mentioned on Twitter a few times. Um, so, um, I'm going to pass over to Amy. Yes, thank you. So, to, to, to counter rumours, I, I have to say, sorry, sorry, Amy, I just wanted to say this. Yeah, so, 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 so one thing, you know, some people had said to me before this event was, have you ever met Amy? Has anyone ever met Amy? There was even a rumour that Amy and Brian were the same person, just because no, we'd never been seen at the same time, at the same place. I've got, yeah. So I, I, yeah, separate one of those separated at birth pictures. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to hand over to Amy. Thank you. Thank you. There, there's no way that anyone would think Brian and I were the same person at all. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're not the same. <laughs> you are younger. Yes, you are. Um, okay, and this is the clicker. Okay. Well, I, I welcome you all here today, and it's really great to be uh, amongst the Joomla community. I've, I've been a part of Joomla for five years. I've been to a few events. I've met Hagen before. Uh, but to, just to have everybody who loves working with Joomla and doesn't love working with Joomla uh, all gathered together is really, really great to be a part of. Uh, last year, my daughter got married, so I didn't get to attend this. So I'm really glad to be here today. And with these people, uh, my, the Malajo team, uh, and to share with you what we've been doing. Um, so what is Malajo? The first thing, uh, you know, Malajo is Joomla. It's built on Joomla 1.6. And we get a lot of questions uh, about Malajo as to whether or not it's a fork or not. And so we're here to tell you today, you know, it, it is a fork. We're forking Joomla. And that's a joke. It's, it's not a fork. <laughs> we are not forking Joomla. We are working together as a community of developers to, you know, make Joomla better. And we're making our code available to the Joomla project. And hopefully, uh, in the process of doing this, you know, encouraging other people also to, you know, tear apart the core uh, uh, in any way that you think is important and try to make it better and share it with other people and, and give it back to the project. I mean, that's what our job is as developers. So, you know, we're not forking Joomla. We're part of the Joomla project. We're part of the Joomla community, and, and we're working together to make Joomla better through the project Malajo. Um, we talk a lot about what the GPL is, but uh, to kind of continue with what I was saying, you know, we, we don't seem to feel like we can take the core code and change it without it being really a big deal. You know, so the core code is available for that purpose too, to look at it, uh, to, to learn from it, and we've learned a lot from it, and the improvements that we've made are built on the work of other people. And, you know, that's the whole point of the GPL, is that we can work together to, to make the code base better and then to share it back. And so that is what we're doing, is we're using the GPL to the fullest. Uh, and we encourage you also to do the same with Malajo. Uh, out on GitHub, it'll be later this week, uh, we'll have Malajo out there and you can download it. We want you to fork it. We want you to make improvements to it. There's lots of improvements that you can make. Uh, and then... Uh, uh, what is it? Issue a pull request, and uh, we'll take a look at the code and bring it back in if if it seems like it's it's workable, and and just start this kind of cyclical motion of of developers working together on code to make it better. Uh, and if we can do that, I think we can you know later we get some of this into core. You know, if we can make some uh, improvements and agreements together on where we want to see the core code go, uh, it'll be good for everyone. Fork on or fork off? That's the... Okay, initially, uh, we talked about Malajo being a distribution of Joomla. We had a lot of different extensions that were going to be in it. And now we're talking about Malajo being an application that runs on the Joomla framework. And the reasons that we made these plan changes was one of the things we wanted to change was the ACL. Uh, we wanted to simplify it just a little bit. 
uh, the Joomla 1.6 ACL has this view level access uh, in it, and you have to create another set of groups to implement that one action of viewing the data. And it, it also has to be a unique collection of groups uh, for you know, a certain group of people that are going to look at something. So it gets to be pretty complex if you think about using it uh, in, in an enterprise environment. Uh, I was at the University of Nebraska for a number of years and built the security system that the data warehouse runs on. So I know that there's a lot of different groups of people who look at things and trying to deploy what we have in 1.6 you know, at a high level would be unwieldy. So we wanted to take a look at kind of simplifying that, and Klaus was the one that worked on that. He'll talk to you a little bit about the ACL. Plus, he has another ACL session on Sunday, I think it is. Uh, but what we ended up finding was that even to make that small change in Joomla 1.6, you had to change so many files, you know, to make that one change, that we were really forking the code. Uh, you know, it would be hard to say we're just overwriting a few classes and we're making a distribution because we're ending up changing nearly every file. And that just doesn't seem very practical for, you know, a somewhat minor change in the ACL. So uh, the other thing that we, we see as we look at the code base and something that Marius did some testing on uh, is that there's, there's a 50% um, uh, duplication of code in the core code base. When you look at five lines or more uh, duplicated in the core code, there's a lot of redundancy in there. And what that means is it's hard to keep it, keep it bug free and also to add enhancements. You know, it's not as flexible. So those, for those reasons, we started uh, looking at um, abstracting out that model view controller a little bit more. And as a result, we, we wound up with a pluggable ACL. So instead of just having one ACL method, you know, each component could, could theoretically have their own ACL that governs how that component is um, used in the, in the Joomla environment. Or if someone wanted to do like a LDAP uh, ACL plugin, they could, they could add that. And uh, reusable code. Uh, and it's, it's also ready for Ajax. And I want to show you one example, if I can figure out how to do an alt tab, of a code comparison. We've got a number of them out there. Um, this on top shows you how you would uh, implement the, the, the layout for a grid that we all use in the back end of Joomla. It's just uh, pulling in a new layout helper class that we have that allows all those layouts in Joomla to be reusable with each other. So it abstracts out the layout. So instead of having to write all of this code for each extension, you just write that little bit of code in, in the beginning. So it's, it's quite a bit of savings. And a framework should, you know, the, with, the, with the Milagio uh, model view controller abstraction, you don't have to write any code uh, to create a standard Joomla extension that does all of the, the uh, check-in and check-out, the delete, uh, or those kinds of functions in the grid, uh, or the standard uh, read, edit, update, delete functions for, for a component. And so with those improvements in mind, you know, when we abstracted out the ACL and created its own class, then we could create uh, a class that implements the Joomla ACL, and Klaus was then able to create another class that implements his version of the ACL, and both of these can be uh, available uh, in the back end. So it's a lot more flexible, uh, and other people can add their own iterations of it. Um, and so from that, from those changes, we decided it was probably better to um, look at creating an application rather than, um, you know, just to take the Joomla 11.1 uh, framework and redo the um, different managers in the back end. I think we got a slide for that. Um, the core application components, like the manager and the menu, the plugin, that kind of thing, redo that with our abstracted model view controller uh, layer, and then um, just bundle that very simply with the minima template, with the administrator template, 
and with uh, Construct, which uh, is going to be shown today, and then this extension builder that we have, so that this application then is really lean and small and good for web builders to go out uh, and, and build uh, applications with it. And I want to show you really quickly here the extension builder. Wrong thing. Okay. This is the back end of, this is a minima template here with Joomla 1.6. And I'll log back in. And we added a feature to the um, extensions area. It's called create. If you go to create, there are ways to create components, modules, plugins, uh, you know, with just providing a little bit of information. Uh, and we have an example out here I'll show you. We just pro provide your singular item and your plural item. And we'll, we'll uh, enhance this also to have multiple views. And then it creates this extension for you that creates this whole front end and back end. And if you look at the options on it, all of it's configurable. This is a fast machine, Matt. It's Windows. Yeah, it's Windows. <laughs> and so you can add tags to it or comments. Uh, one thing we found too, when we really cleaned up the model view controller, abstract, uh, abstracted out all those those functions from the model view controller and put them into parent classes, it's very easy to extend what features you put into a component. So with a very little code, we're able to add version management. So any component that's created with this uh, abstraction automatically gets version history. So as you like change an article, a backup is created, and then using this regular grid, you can restore that article, you know, fr from an uh, earlier version. And so that's an example of why it's important to have a nice abstracted um, model, because it's easy to add those features. And that can be turned on or off, but it doesn't require any code. Um, we have filters and permissions, but in terms of like, I. Uh, if you look at the admin layout, just to give you an example of the options here, all, all of what's in the interface is an option. So you can decide to display the title or not. Uh, you can decide what toolbar buttons to add just by selecting them from a list box. Uh, the filters or the submenus that are available are automatically there. And then the filters, uh, you just pick it from a list box, like the category or or the um, featured or not featured. Uh, and then the queries that are used uh, for the filters or the, the filter queries. And then also what columns you want to present in that grid. So what we see, you know, what we create right now in terms of a component, all of that's just automatically generated uh, because there's virtually no code at that uh, component layer anymore. It's all abstracted. And the same is true at the front end. Pardon? I'm supposed to stop now. That's my cue. Okay. Um, okay, so Klaus is going to talk a little bit about the ACL. Hi. This one I just. Okay, uh, I will be really, really short because uh, on Sunday I have another session presenting the whole thing. Uh, do come. It will be a little bit more radical than this one. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, in, in short, no, what we did is simplified. I really tried to simplify everything from the user interface to the code. And it's not really at the end yet, but with every round it gets better and better. And what you're gonna see is just one of the uh, expressions of that uh, simplifying. Uh, one thing is simplified, like treats view as an action. So no more view groups, no more view levels, because this means in short 50% less uh, ACL to configure for the 
end user. You don't have to configure, edit, uh, manage, blah, 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 in one interface, and then go and configure view in the other interface, which all, each also functions differently. Now it's unified in one place, uh, in one grid, uh, you're gonna see next. And the next thing that's visible to outside is really radically improved and simplified user interface, uh, which I'm gonna show now if Matt's It's all yours. Just, just to show you how it looks. No, this is the permissions. Uh, it shows the gray icons uh, are inherited. The colored ones are uh, assigned, and it has a JavaScript which was initially done by Hannes and then a little bit improved by me uh, so that it actually changes. You see? You see the icons? You click and it changes. And you instantly see what they are doing. You don't need to save, reload, come back. Aha, uh -huh, okay, I missed it. You just see it. <laughs> you don't have 10 taps. You have everything in one place. And this is the biggest one, so I think it's going to work because if I, I will show you also the, for instance, the article one, uh, which is a smaller. Oh. So. Okay, I canceled. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's that bug, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here is the articles. How it's, if you uh, know more access uh, column, and if we click on it. Here we have, it's minima, you see, view, delete, edit, edit, edit state. So the same thing, it's everything is in inherited here because it inherits from the component, uh, from the category component and the global. Uh, the same as the Joomla one, but you can see what's, what's in effect. You just change it, you just deny it, and everything is denied, except you see super users and admins which are you cannot deny them. So if the JavaScript takes care of that, that you don't accidentally uh, change something you are not allowed to change. That, uh, that's in short. Please come in on Sunday when, uh, when I will also show uh, the code uh, behind it, uh, the API, and so on. OK, thank you. <laughs> and now, as uh, uh, everything we showed with Amy, is happening inside Minima, which is a brilliant new admin interface by Marco. Nice introduction. <laughs> <clears throat> so you've been looking at this template and be wondering, like, what's that? Is that uh, Joomla? Is that uh, Bluestork? A little bit prettier. Uh, this is a template I've been working on for f for a while. I actually did a lightning talk in Jane Beyond 2010. I'm not sure if any of you were there, and I'll show like just the. The, you know, that's when he really got serious with the project that I started pushing forward. And um, so basically it's, a, it's an admin template. I have this vision that uh, I think uh, backend shouldn't be boring. Usually you see frontend getting all the attention, all the fancy stuff, and then backend is just, you know, you have information, just throw a table and then show in a table. Um, <clears throat> I think if you think about backend's concept, that's where you work, like your office. So does that mean that your office has to be boring? That's how I like to think. If you look at some like fancy companies like Google, you'll see pool tables and sofas. And so it doesn't have to be like, like that, something really inside the box. Um, I'll show a little bit of the template. Uh, this is the dashboard. The idea is to have uh, many, that many modules here. And then you would have uh, three columns if you want and you would be able to drag and drop. I'm still working on that. Um, you have this, comp uh, 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 okay. We have that co components tab on the top. You got it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. And um, the idea is you see everything that's installed in here. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing this so you can, when you, if, for example, if you want to access Molage tools, it's not, the idea is not that you have to click here and come to Molage tools. It's mostly like, you see everything that's installed in one nice interface. Something like when you have in your, uh, in your mobile phone that you have to swipe. And that's basically what I'm trying to do here, but uh, this is the navigation. 
what I'm focusing on, and uh, I've been doing some improvements on it, like Mega Dropdown. For example, uh, wouldn't it be cool if uh, here under the media we'd have the upload form that you can upload directly from the menu? So things like that that I'm trying to improve, and uh, that's where Molagio comes in because um, Minima is a template, right? But during the development of Minima, I've been hitting a lot of limitations in Joomla. Uh, I call it like Joomla walls, <laughs> Joomla brick walls that I have to work around. Things like I want to have an Ajax interface because you know I'm working on a, on a template to be fast, to give you a, nice, a nice user experience for the user. So it wouldn't be cool if you could come here and click, 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 and everything would just Ajax and do it for you. And I cannot do that with Joomla at the moment. And that's where Molajo is, you know, they're like cleaning the house for me to party and fix this kind of stuff to go crazy in the back end, basically. Um, but yeah, this is Minima. Uh, you have this minimal toolbar. And uh, we're also, since we're working in the framework, I can actually make the components uh, look as they should because right now we don't have many standards in the back end. So we can really do nice things in, in Molagio. And that's basically the difference between Minima in Molagio and Minima standalone, because you can download Minima separate if you want. And uh, yeah, that's basically the difference between those two. There's a lot of possibilities for me to, to work in Molagio and Minima to fix these kind of things. And yeah, is there anything you, like, you guys want me to show? I'm not sure if I have much time, I think. So, for example, here in this, uh, who has a question? Yeah, what? <laughs> you said that um, Molagio gives you the opportunity to use Ajax and to implement these features that you couldn't do in uh, Joomla. Uh, but also uh, Minima is downloadable. Anyone can, can download it and install it. So what happens if I install uh, this Minima onto a Joomla 1.6 installation? Well, you won't get everything that you get in Molagio, basically, because uh, since Minima is a template, uh, I don't want to dig into the framework and start fixing things. That would go completely beyond the, the goal of the project. And uh, you know, Minima means minimal. I don't want to give you a distribution or a new framework. So yeah, you would miss some of the things that you would have in Molagio. Yeah, so you have to download Molagio to get everything. But th these things I'm mentioning, they're work in progress. I'm not, I don't have Ajax right now. I don't have a, a drag and drop, another thing that I would like to have, but I can't in a, in a journal framework. And uh, what I'm doing here, I'm, I'm creating this set of uh, UI things for people to reuse it. For example, if you want your component to look like this, all you have to do is just call some CSS classes. And then you know you create a menu, call it submenu, and then it does this for you. So it's like a UI mini framework or something. So the idea is to make it really reusable and as compatible as possible. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions after this presentation, just come to me and I can show you something about, show a little bit more about Minima, right? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. How is everyone? All right. Um, oh, look at that. Our slideshow stopped. So my name is Matt Thomas. I'm here to present the Construct Template Development Framework. Construct is a template development framework that will be included with Malajo. Where is our slides here? So I have a very interesting challenge here. Uh, I was asked to give a presentation for Juma Day in New York. I have an hour and a half in New York. I have 10 minutes here, so I'm going to try the impossible and convey everything about this simple development framework in 10 minutes. So, um, oh, okay, a couple of slides were changed on me. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so basically, Construct Template Development Framework is a development framework for templates. It's different than what you're used to seeing with template frameworks. It doesn't have WYSIWYGs, wigs, it doesn't have user interfaces, you have to write code. If you are afraid of code, I'm sorry. You, you have to go somewhere else. But that's okay, because we're all developers here, right? We all love code, right? Does anyone here not love code? <laughs> I 
Okay, three of you. Well, okay, that's okay. I mean, that's what, 98%? Well, you don't have to write serious code. You have to write a little bit of code. And uh, Jen, I know you are not a big fan of code, but I bet you'd like Construct. Um, hmm. So I, yeah, slides are out, way out of whack. Yeah, I don't, well, okay, so I'm gonna do something real crazy here. It's okay. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. No, it's okay. Do, 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 do. Okay, <laughs> it was my fault. I admit it, I did this to try to break the ice, to break the tension. Okay, so Construct Template Development Framework, uh, the professional version that was created for Joomla 1.6 will be shipping with Milajo. Yes, it's another framework. But it's actually been around since January 2009. Has anyone here heard of it? Oh, good. Has anyone here heard of it before it was nominated for a J Oscar? Yes. Okay, so a little bit of publicity, but uh, the bottom line is it's another framework, but it's different. The reason for using Construct is it's for the rapid development of unique templates. So it's for developers creating unique, one-of-a-kind custom templates. Now the goal that I'm trying to achieve here is to maximize flexibility, control, and customization while minimizing duplication and all that work. Basically, I'm trying to keep it dry. All the normal code that you'd write for template, there's like 90, 95%, sorry, is that better? Okay, 90, 95% of the code that you normally write for template, logic, core, CSS, all that stuff, that's all done. What's left for you to do, I'm sorry, talking, what's left for you to do is the CSS that creates your unique styles. So here's a little sample of some CSS that we wrote yesterday, or no, two days ago on the plane, it took us, what, 25, 30 minutes, something like that, yeah, around there, and this is the basic result. So basically what you're looking at here is a default installation of Construct plus our custom CSS. Now there are a number of features with Construct. We have 40 module positions. They're all semantically named. So I'm gonna qu pop quiz here. Can anyone guess where the module position header below might be? Under the header, thank you. Give the girl a round of applause. Christina Solana, she's part of us too. But the whole idea is we have HTML5 semantically named module positions. So you don't have to guess. You don't have to look at some sort of graphic chart of where the modules are. It's intuitive. It's scalable, the naming convention. We have up to five content columns. Everything has dynamic, dynamic widths depending on their neighbors. So if you have two modules in one row, they're each 50%, you know, three, 33%, so on and so forth. Uh, we, but the thing about Construct is it follows the traditional Joomla template structure. So if you've ever created a fairly basic Joomla template, you can look at the file structure for Construct and you say, oh, this looks very familiar. There's a few enhancements, a few additions, but the core of it is a traditional Joomla template. There are a number of custom views, like the error offline page, also mobile. This is where you go, ooh, nah. Okay. Also theming capability. So here's a quick uh, screenshot of some of the backend parameters. Just, just illustrate some of the uh, useful tools for designers and developers, some layout aids, uh, hiding and showing links, things like that. I'm gonna skip through a lot of these slides really quick, so I'm gonna talk about a few major items here. So basically how it works is pretty much everything's in place with a default layout, default structure, core CSS, you know, browser resets, uh, typography, sizing, uh, clear fix, I, I know Tom and Stian with the clear fix in the CSS3 and HTML5, but some of us still have to support IE6. So, you know, we try to walk that fine line. But the whole thing with Construct is everything can be overridden. So you can use it as is, or you can customize it. There are a number of backend parameters, layout, typography, mobile customization. I'm gonna whip through these real quick. Um, so basically we have uh, the general parameters I kind of quickly overviewed with the um, showing and hiding dates and uh, have a layout aid. So, you know, um, in, in uh, Firebug, it shows you where your margins and paddings are. You can turn that on the front and see everything at once. Uh, we have extended template override diagnostics and body classes. Don't forget about that. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but really, the major item right here is at the bottom there, custom style sheet. That's where your magic comes in. That's your style sheet that you write. 
And that's how that's where you make it yours in the most basic implementation. Yes, there's IE, IE support. We have a PNG fix for IE6 and a CSS3 implementation for IE6 through 8. Uh, everything's targeted, so for performance reasons, you actually set the HTML elements, classes, and IDs that you want to target with those fixes. Layout controls, everything in construct is proportional. So the layout's proportional, uh, all the sizing is proportional, so all we have to do is set one outer width and everything else fits right in. It doesn't use a grid system. Everything in construct is basically handcrafted for construct. Um, try to keep the code clean and minimal. I think the installed package size is something like 130K, something like that. Uh, you can use a number of different um, units for your, lit, your widths, EMS, pixels, percent. You can also uh, have fluid media support. So your images, if you're using a max fluid width layout, your images will actually resize as the template does. There's a little tricks in there. So you see the basic view of the layout right there. Uh, CSS sticky footer as well. Okay, so here's one of the big ones. At two weeks ago today, I committed a new um, enhanced mobile tablet support for Construct. Oh, okay, cool, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, Construct uses a very comprehensive and yet lightweight detection script created by a gentleman by, by the name of Anthony Hand of the Mobile ESP Project. That's mobileesp.com. Uh, this script is a PHP, JavaScript, ASP, and I believe C++. And basically this detection script detects all of your normal uh, mobile devices, plus a lot of the outliers, Google, Google TV, uh, Sony PlayStation, your game consoles, um, everything. And it's all in different classes, so if you want to segregate different views for different mobile devices, you can do that. I lump them all into one, one class with the exception of tablets, because depending on your design, you may or may not want a uh, mobile optimized view for the tablet. It all starts with a very basic CSS view, and then it's progressively enhanced with jQuery Mobile. So on your left, you see a screenshot of the basic, basic CSS view for a mobile device. This can be customized, but if for a device other than like my old Windows smartphone, that something like an iPod, you'll see something in the middle. Or on the right, you see here we have nice rounded corners, drop shadows, actually that's HTML5 with CSS3, uh, jQuery, uh, did anyone go to Stian and Tom's talk earlier today? So basically jQuery in this case is just adding classes, it's not actually doing the enhancement, so it's adding classes where the CSS kicks in. So for devices that support it, you'll notice some change, some difference between the two. And basically what that is, is there's five basic page elements on the mobile view. You have your actual page, you have your header, your navigation, your content area, and the footer. Those can all be customized using jQuery's theme swatches. Uh, there's also a mobile offline view, and also jQuery mobile also supports forms. So you see here some customization for the theme elements. Um, yeah, you can select your navigation, navigation position before or after the content. And one other um, parameter that you don't see here is enabling or disabling tablet support as well. So you he see here some different screenshots of different mobile views. Uh, this on the left in the middle, they're actually inheriting the theme from the page elements. On the right, I have a combination of different uh, theme swatches provided by uh, jQuery. This is an example of the offline form. And uh, jQuery Mobile also allows us to use a responsive layout for tablet devices. Uh, I mentioned the uh, signable navigation position. And the, the layout for the mobile view can be overridden. So you can customize the layout for the mobile view. So on the left here, we see a narrow device with jQuery mobile. On the right, we see a tablet view. It's the same website, same template. It just expands its responsive layout. I have a screenshot with a tablet view here. So um, typography, I love typography. I love simple websites. So this is kind of like my own scratch that I'm itching. I built in a number of WebSafe uh, font families. You can also assign custom font families. Plus, you can also use up to three Google web fonts freely assigned to any HTML element, uh, class, ID, you actually have control over sizing of those fonts. So you see a little uh, screenshot of assigning that. Now here's a big topic, and I probably have, what, two minutes maybe to talk about this? Which is okay, I can do it. Extended template overrides. I talked about how the template framework can be, can be completely customized. 
So um, everyone here is familiar with your index.php with the template? Yep. Yep, yep. Has anyone ever modified that? And then maybe there is an update for that template, you update it, and then you lose your modifications? Yes, yes. Well, not with Construct. Construct has a default layout, plus we have an additional layouts folder where you can override the core layout. Now we're talking about things like your module positioning, um, you can add or remove modules, um, column positioning, all the different page elements, the layout. The neat thing about this too is that you can also add custom logic with a layout override, you can also add elements to the head. So there's a, a, a further degree of customization there. Uh, you can also dynamically add additional style sheets. And all this happens either globally, so for the entire template you can override the layout or add a custom style sheet, or, and this is where it gets really fun, you can do it on a category level. So if you have just a category of articles that you don't want certain module positions, or you may want to rearrange a navigation, you can create a custom layout, a template layout, for just those categories. Or maybe a component. Let's say you're using Fireboard, or um, Fireboard, NinjaBoard, sorry, Okay, one per, okay, so if you're using Ninja Board and you don't want your left and right columns, or actually in Construct is column one, two, three, four, if you don't want those, you can actually just do a layout override for that component and remove the columns. You can do the same thing for menu items and articles, and it's all dynamic, it's all based on a naming scheme. Same thing with the style sheets. You can add style sheets to categories, components, items, and articles. Is that really confusing? Or does that make sense? Make sense? Cool, all right. So the whole point here is it allows fine-grained dynamic customization of your template. You still have to write code though, but we like code, right? We love code. So this is where I say thank you, and this is where I try to jump back into the other presentation we were running. And da, da, da. okay. From how come it's not uh, cooperating? Need some elevator music. All right. I also need to introduce the Malaja core team. You've met Amy Steven. Round of applause. <laughs> Christina Solana. Christina is the creator of the blank slate template that I used for the example, the, the CSS that we wrote in 25 minutes on the plate. Marco Barbosa. Dad, well, you know me. Klaus. <laughs> Babs G. <laughs> and we, I guess we dropped off Hannes. So Hannes Poppenberg. And we also have, um, actually, other, oh, we have, okay, I see. Other contributors, okay, here's, here's Hannes. Uh, Nicholas, where, is Nicholas here? Nicholas from Akiba Backup? Yeah, I guess you probably heard of him. He is contributing admin tools, a, a Melajo version of admin tools, so Melajo will have built-in security. Gobizu Siwu, uh, he's from Ethiopia. He's contributing Jay Patello, which is a CSS, JavaScript, minification, CDN. CDN support performance plugin. It's really cool. I've seen like 67%, 80% uh, improvement in site performance with this plugin. It's awesome. Hannes with the URL routing and your simplified URLs. Chris. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yep, Hannes will be presenting that router. And Chris Rall is working on a Melajo installer. Now the last group of people I wanted to talk about real quick is the Elders Council. Does anyone recognize any of these names? You, you might know a few of them, maybe. Basically, bottom line is this is a fantastic group of people who have kind of adopted us as, you know, their lost children. They're helping us out. They're overseeing what we're doing. They're, they're kind of keeping us in line, keeping us out of trouble. But most importantly, they have made themselves available a very incredible, very helpful resource. If we ever have any questions, if we ever need any guidance, they're there for us, they're there to help us. And they're just an awesome group of people. So it's really fantastic to have their support. It means a lot to us. It, it's really amazing. Um, anything to add, anyone? Oops, I'm going to fall here. The, the goal of the uh, Elders 
group too is to help build community collaboration. And so, you know, we need to keep building this and, and through Git and forking this code and giving it back and adding your ideas, you know, we wanna, we wanna get this collaboration going. So, yeah, it's been helpful to have the elders get this started for us. Okay, so um, see what else. Okay, so if anyone has any questions after today, uh, I'll, I'll, we'll do questions real quick here in a second. You can always contact us at collaborate at malaja.org. We have a malaja.org website that we're working on. We'll be launching here pretty soon, you think? Yes, yes, we have a thumbs up from Christina. And um, now we will take questions from the audience. Do you wanna use that mic and I'll run around? Get my exercise now. Let's see if there's a question first. Hi there. Oh, yeah. I got two questions, friendly question and an evil question. Uh, the friendly question is actually towards you, Matt, so maybe you go up there so you can talk. Uh, it's about the construct uh, stuff. In the end you talked about like for if you want to show a different component like Ninja board yep. with construct template, you can remove different module positions and stuff like that. That's like stuff I could already do before when I build custom templates. I would put like lots of PHP logic in my index.php file. Sure. To the template. So how how is it how do you do that with a construct template? Is I guess it's done in a nicer way. I, I don't know how you did it, but uh, <laughs> It's actually done with PHP logic. Um, I could probably show you the code if you'd like to see it, if we, if we have time for that. But do they have to use PHP logic to do that? Well, the PHP logic's already done. So all you need to do is you need to create that file, name it appropriately, and put it in the right place. Everything else is done for you. So you don't have to write any code for that. It's just, uh, it's just a naming convention. And the template, um, the framework itself looks in those locations. There's a certain logic and a certain order it looks for these files. So there's, um, I guess, kind of an inheritance type thing. And if it sees those files and it matches a certain case, it loads it. Otherwise, it just falls back to the next layer. Does that answer yeah. your question? Okay. I was mostly wanted to know if I have to put everything into one file and it gets quite big and uh, confusing or no, it can be spread out a little different. Yeah, it's spread out. Um, mm. the, in, there's a layouts folder. And with, there's a, there's, in the root level layouts, you can overhead the template globally. Then there's an article folder, um, there's an item folder, and so there's different subfolders that you put things in. Okay, thanks. Now to the other question. Uh, I'm a really big fan of Joomla, and I'm wondering, once this stuff is stable, what situations would be there for me to choose Joomla instead of Mulaju? To choose Joomla. Why would I, why would I download Joomla? And use Joomla instead of Mulaju. Uh, I think it. <laughs> oh, oh, I am. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, really. I, in my opinion, and this is my personal opinion, it really depends on the case. Uh, we talked about uh, Mulaju as an application. So, if um, I'll give you a good use case, something I do for my clients. Um, sometimes I integrate a Joomla installation in parallel to a static HTML website and they want one particular bit of functionality, like a newsletter, something simple, or a forum. And so why should I install Joomla and all the core components, all the core extensions, and all the whole Joomla package just for that one extension? So in that particular use case, I would definitely use the Melajo core application plus that one extension. Then I can have that in parallel to the static HTML website. But that's just one example. Uh, I think it's really a case-by-case -case basis. Um, I, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I just totally missed that right there. <laughs> no, I think you didn't understand it. Okay. Um, if I understand it right in the future, let's say in two years or something like that, uh, I can st will still be able to use uh, extensions for Joomla in Mulajo. I can download them. So if I have everything I can get from Joomla, mm -hmm. so what situations would be out there for me to choose Joomla instead of Mulajo? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, we'll see what happens with Joomla. You know, Joomla is, it's like Melajo, it's kind of evolving, it's changing. If it's two years down the road, a lot can happen. Uh, you know, it's possible that with the separation for, of the CMS from the framework, we might see more Joomla applications developing. So maybe Joomla as we know it today may not exist anymore. It might be a series of applications. We, we really don't know. Um, it, it's high, kind of hard to say, really. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I don't think anyone should use Melajo who's not really comfortable with code. 
you know, I wouldn't, we wouldn't recommend this for end users or people who, you know, we don't want, uh, we're not looking for a giant end user community. We're looking for developers. And more than that, we're looking for collaborators and people who are willing to take a little risk because there is a little more risk to using Melage, of course, than Joomla because you've got a big community behind Joomla. You've got the bug squad there. You've got, you know, regular updates. And we're going to, you know, support our application and, and fix our bugs and all that. But, you know, it's, it's, it, you are taking on risk to use Melajo because you don't have that, that established project. But, uh, you know, the, if you get involved with Melajo, it would be to help contribute to it, to help make improvements that we can maybe hopefully get into core. That would be really the way to, to look at it. And we won't, you know, want end users really using it. This is for developers and to think about a smaller core and, you know, more functional uh, developer suite. So... Okay. Does that answer your question? Thanks. Yeah, you're welcome. Nice handle that. Any more? <clears throat> question. We did the fork question earlier, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hope I won't be, you know, um, too redundant in, you know, uh, because I, I think that the, the, you know, the previous, uh, um, the previous um, uh, participant already more or less, you know, addressed what I had in mind. Which is just one one particular uh, aspect of of uh, Molajo and its connection with, you know, Joomla. Uh, well, I am uh, in the defin in the several definitions that that uh, and, and labels that that uh, the organizers of J and Beyond have, you know, created for all of us. I would be more an integrator than you know, uh, like a hardcore developer. So um, I am mostly concerned about, you know, the development policy itself, you know, pretty much in the line of the previous speaker. But um, since I have some, some you know, uh, experience with, uh, uh, mostly with uh, certain Joomla, uh, sorry, certain Linux dis distributions where, you know, uh, there were, um, well, and there, there is still the, you know, the dramatic case of Mandrake, then called Mandriva, and so on. And from Mandriva, you had, you know, several offshots like PC Linux, PC Linux OS, and so on. It's so like a never-ending bleeding. And um, if some of those projects, they sh they started as, you know, an, uh, a spin-off or, or an offshot of of the initial dis distribution, uh, with the intent to precisely to uh, get more uh, coders to contribute and so on and to follow uh, uh, an approach slightly different than the one that was being uh, to a certain extent determined from Paris because it's where the, he uh, the headquarters of Mandriva is still nowadays. Um, when it comes to Joomla and Molajo, uh, I mean, technically this is a sort of a fork. I mean, or it is, it is the, or, or at least it, for me, it looks like a, 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 the, the seeds of a fork. Uh, so, it'll be a new application running on the Joomla framework. Sorry? It's, it'll be a new application mm -hmm. running on the Joomla framework. Okay, so you still, you still need Joomla as, as, let's say, the, the, the core engine. The Joomla hmm. framework, yeah. Exactly. So, um, once... Uh, I think it is with Joomla 1.7 that there will be a separation between libraries and the, the CMS itself, right. if, if I'm not right. mistaken. It'll okay. be like that. So, okay, so uh, from that point onwards, and we, st or personally, I still don't know precisely how Joomla 1.8 will look like, uh, but uh, how, how will you cope, you know, uh, this, you know, thin borderline between enhancing Joomla through Molajo and forking from Joomla and creating like a totally different thing that, you know, we are at an event called J and Beyond. So I don't know, probably three years from now we, could, we can be at M and Beyond or something like that. So, this, you know, you know, what are what are the boundaries here? This is this this is you know from from a pol from a development policy perspective, this is what the, the most puzzling aspect. Uh, to me, you know, uh, that is to say, n n not only from a practical perspective of w what do I have to gain, you know, if, if, I ha if I am in charge of a project and I have, you know, several developers uh, to coordinate and I would be choosing, you know, Molajo as like a sort of, you know, application framework on the top of another framework, which is, you know, no, no. Joomla. And so 
what, what are precisely the borderlines here? I mean, do, do, do you yourselves regard this as a potential fork from Joomla itself? Or don't you, at this point, you don't perceive such, you know, danger, so to speak? No, no. Uh, it, there is no answer to your question, really. Yeah, because it depends on so, on so many factors that it's impossible to answer. Because well, I mean, I, I am. It's you know, not, I raised it. I raised it's it. It's really not. It, it really doesn't depend really on us. It uh, but, but a lot. The thing is a the lot thing of is, this depends on the other side. Hold on, hold on. The thing is that <laughs> who 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 are we and who is the other side? I mean. Uh, we all work with Joomla, okay, don't we? Okay, uh, we are getting into philosophical questions here. But, uh, we are talking I mean, I, about... I am not, I, am not, I, I said, I said before, I, I am not uh, you know, a, a programmer myself. I am a sort of integrator. I am in charge of you know, technical coordination and so on. So I really have to be aware of you know, what sort of... What horse will I be, be betting on? Like back in 2005, I decided to go where the community went which was Joomla, when it was forked from Mumble, right? I don't think by the you way. need to decide. You need to decide on the few, uh, on the features, uh, we, uh, and then you see Joomla has these features, Mulaju has these features. I will take this one for this project. I will take this one for the another another project. It's not like A or B, and then you are married for the whole uh, your uh, the rest of your life. You can <laughs> for you can but, I mean, do it but by what, case you can okay okay uh, but listen what 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 still puzzles me a bit is that we are again uh, are we witnessing the you know like the birth of joomla's evil son or something like that i mean is, is it i mean in, in in a joomla in a joomla event i mean that's that's you know uh, on, you don't know what basis. we don't know what you are looking at, and you don't know what you are looking at because it depends on so many factors that nobody can predict what will but happen. Listen, I, I, I've, heard, I've heard, you know, in my, in my <laughs> it's impossible to answer your question. In my because experience with it, Linux and particularly if, with Mandarin, if Mandarin I and so on make and so forth, create a new feature and propose it to the core project, and I'm currently banned and I cannot do that. Okay. <laughs> Where's the answer? Uh, you, you are going to see a lot of applications coming off. When they release 11.1, uh, you're going to see a lot of applications coming. There's going to be a lot of innovation, and never be afraid of innovation. If you see developers walking away and not using this framework to develop, then you can be afraid. But as long as developers are innovating, this is a good thing. You know. Okay, we're not forking. Second question, we, we really need to, add, let's do this over beer in, in the dungeon. We will we'll I, continue this. I want, okay. I want to say only a sentence or maybe two, because I, I worked with so many systems, and at the moment I earned my money with Drupal, just, just to inform you. <laughs> and when I, when I see Molayo, and when I see Noku, and when I see Joomla, then I see the big Joomla ship with a, with a hole in, in the bottom, yeah? And I see these guys who paint the walls of this ship to, to make it wonderful, nice, and, and accessible by I don't know what. And I see the Noku crew, which, which is tuning the engine to, to go faster because they have a hole. Yeah? And we need someone who fix this hole. Yeah? <laughs> so this is, this is the, pro the problem here in, in this project. And for me, it is... Clearly, the production leadership team, and we have to talk about this, and it is not, I'm, I'm not involved in, in all these things. I'm only the bloody writer here. Yeah? So, but this is I what, I, what I see from the outside. So, yeah. so why are they here and they present, yeah, what I want to have? Yeah. <laughs> so, and I want to have this in Joomla 1.6 core immediately tomorrow. And yeah, this, this I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Totally agree. Totally agree. Uh, one last uh, comment. Uh, why why is it bad to fork Joomla? I mean, it's it's the open source philosophy. You can it's not take bad code. To fork it. It can, you can take code and improve it, uh, release it under a different business model, do whatever you want with it. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that the Joomla community and many users are in a denial. You know what? They think that there's a, there's an establishment. There was never an establishment. It was the changes that pushed Joomla to become what it is today. Absolutely. And it is the community that is going to shift yeah. development into a better phase or a worse phase. 
Right. Okay, so it's not, a, it's not a bad thing if you have a fork or a distribution or whatever. Uh, actually, it, 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 it's, it's, good to be, it's good to be right on the words, okay? Th that's right. It's, it's good to be right on the words, but let's not be so technical. I mean, it's, uh, most of you have businesses here. You have to uh, decide. I understand the, the anxiety of many people to uh, be able to choose a specific platform. Uh, because they want to know that this specific platform will be around for many years to come. They know that Joomla has been around for like close to a decade now, if you count Mambo in. So when Molazo comes in or Nuke or any other distribution, uh, you're afraid that uh, it's just a hype and something that's going to die. Well, if you, if you see who's behind these, produ uh, these products, these projects, you will see that the, they are the same people that were... Uh, you know, uh, part of Mambo since the very early days. Mm -hmm. So it's not some new kids that are coming around. Not that it's a bad thing to have new kids coming around. I'm really but, old. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the oh. new kids here. And, yeah. And, and the final comment is that on the ship that is leaking, the K2 crew is uh, closing the holes yeah. at the bottom. <laughs> I, and just to, one last thing on the fork thing, I don't have any problem, wouldn't have any problem saying we're forking Joomla. If, if we had continued with the plan we had initially with the ACL, where we overrode all the layout files and all the views and everything, we would be forking Joomla because we would be taking the core code, applying changes with no intention of going back. But we had to make a decision if that was really what we wanted to do, and we decided to rewrite it and address some other problems and create an application. So the application is this new code, new code that we will share with the project and we hope they'll consider because there's some improvements that would be helpful to everyone. But the application is new. On, an, on their framework, it is not a fork, technically. It is not a fork. You know, it's a new application. So I agree with you. It, we should feel free to fork uh, the code and play with it and, and not be ashamed to admit it or say it, but we decided to take the route of an application, you know, to really try and kind of uncouple ourselves completely and go ahead and try and see what kind of improvements we could make. Absolutely. They want us to use that framework. Right. Yeah, and that's why they're we, they developers should innovate. That's good. We should not be afraid anymore. You know, we've been so afraid to do these things, and we need to get going, and we need to share it with each other, and and build this collaboration. Anyone who saw Herman's uh, presentation this morning, it just built. You know, we're just building on some of the things he said too. It's it's important for us to to experiment, to share those things with each other, and not feel like it's a bad thing. You know, what would be bad is if we didn't do those things. So. Any other questions? Okay, please. It's, it's my Any turn. other questions? <laughs> yes, I've got a question. Okay. Uh, I'll try to make it compact. Um, first, an introduction. 25 years ago when I was a kid. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> the uh, extension uh, creator that's in uh, Malajo, um, if you make an extension with that or a component, will that also work on the Joomla? Core? If you load, we've got right now our model view controller abstraction layer loading as a plugin, so you would have to load that too because it uses those classes. But yes, it, it's running right now in a Joomla 1.6 instance. Okay, so if you make an extension with that, you also have to yes. install the other yes. plugin. Yes, because okay. we've abstracted out all the code, so you're going to have to have that core, you know, to run it. Okay. Yep. That was it. It'd be kind of like the J extended library, very much that model. Hi. Uh, Hi. I, just a quick one. Uh, who owns uh, Molajo trademark? Uh, I guess that would be Babs. Do you want to stand up? Babs did our, uh, created our trademark and our logo, uh, and um, I guess she's the owner, if you want to know who an owner is. We're, we're trusting Babs to continue working with us. <laughs> um, she, I think she says you can use it, right? Will, you, will there be lawsuits? Threats of lawsuits, permissions. <laughs> she wants you to use it. It's GPL. That's Babs. T 
TM. Hi. Um, so you guys are improving what's the CMS application in 1.6, and I'm here. Thank you. It's a black microphone. Um, so you're improving um, the 1.6 CMS application, and you you encountered uh, a few issues and decided to create a known CMS application. Do I understand that correctly? Yep. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah. Okay. okay. But you're still using the Joomla framework as base. Yes. So the uh, my question. I was talking to Matt, but then yeah, everybody went skiing. But um, my question is: so the Joomla framework. Is uh, you guys consider that a good framework to build upon? Um, well, I'm trying to say this in a nice way. <laughs> it's not that bad. But uh, so you guys consider the Joomla framework a good framework to build upon, and then the CMS application 1.6 with all the the ACL that wasn't the most user friendly implementation that wasn't. So you're rebuilding that, but you didn't decide to um, build this Malajo. Uh, application on top of a completely different framework. So is that say, is that saying indirectly that the Joomla framework is of a better quality maybe than the CMS? I'm not a coder, so this might sound like bullshit. In my head it sounds logical. Um, than the CMS application in 1.6? Okay, so that's all the time we have today. <laughs> yeah. No, but it's really just an interest question, not, a, not, a, not to bash I anything or anybody. Me personally, I probably would have done this on Nuku had I started from the beginning. I think it's got a really solid uh, framework underneath of it, and they've done, they've solved a lot of the problems already that that we're working on solving. The abstraction with the model view controller, all of that work's already been done. So I probably would have picked Nuku, but we are we are building on the one six framework, and we're making those improvements and offering those back to the project, and hopefully those will be received. So I don't you know I, I don't know that I would say it's the best framework, but it is the one we're building on, and and we do expect to see improvements. Uh, over time with it, uh, but we could end up moving it at some point too. But you know that's the framework it's on right now. Okay, thank you. I don't know if that's a. That's just me personally. Does anyone else have a another answer to it? Maybe maybe as a quick response. Yes, the uh, CMS the framework of 1.6 is better than the CMS. At least from my perspective. <laughs> um, we and Hannes was on the release team for 1.6, so he, he has a lot of knowledge about that framework. Hi. Uh, I'm not uh, the biggest expert on, on GPL, but uh, so this might sound like an a ignorant question, but... We, you know, after all these fork questions, a GPL question would be great. <laughs> uh, could could uh, the project adopt all your, your code that you've... Would, is that something that would interest you suddenly to find everything that you've done incorporated into 1.7? Uh, that would be pretty soon, to be honest. You know, it's going to, it should have, um, it should be cleaned up. It's got a lot of bugs in it. Mm -hmm. It needs to be uh, cleaned up and um, have unit tests put on it, good testing on it. 1.7 would be very soon. So that wouldn't be a realistic look at it. Mm -hmm. But 1.8, for sure. Yeah, so, absolutely. And so that, that's something that maybe we could all lobby for. Well, let's all make it better and, and use it and make it better, and that ends up lobbying for it. I think forum posts right now are probably going to end up not being well received, but if we can show some collaboration and testing on it and, and make it better, yes? I would suggest there's a, a page on Joomla.org where you can make your suggestion on what to do with, with Joomla. Uh, I would suggest that we create this thing that we would like to see more of Mulajo uh, and uh, the team in in the core, and then vote for it yeah. there, because uh, that 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 what needs to happen for the guys in in uh, the Umla community uh, working to understand that we want this. Uh, there is also another option. Perhaps because that's a, such a speculation uh, that Joomla perhaps in a few years won't exist anymore as CMS, just as framework. So we would have Molajo and you would have like five or ten other applications built upon it, and there would be no core Joomla CMS. That's an option. I don't. Know, I'm not saying that will happen, but that's also no, an option that could uh, uh, as well. Uh, not one core thing, but like you know, you now have 
hundred or I don't know, perhaps not hundred, but at least ten uh, com com uh, com com contacts on the extensions. Uh, so we, well, why won't you have ten? Ten applications available uh, built upon the framework. Yeah, I, w I would like to avoid anything that creates more dissension because while we continue to separate, uh, WordPress is only bigger and bigger, and pretty soon Drupal is going to be bigger than us too. So uh, as far as our brand being disseminated and losing its sense of worth, uh, this is what's going to happen. Anything that can uh, j help these projects join together and become stronger is good for all of us. Sure. Absolutely. More exercise. Yes. Uh, what's, uh, what's the uh, impact on the extension developer? Do, do they need to do something extra for Molagio or uh, also, will an extension be aware of uh, where it's running, Molage or Joomla Core, or I don't know. That, that depends on what you're doing in your extension, perhaps uh, if you're using just the framework, because this application framework is building upon Joomla f framework. It's adding things to it. So you can either go to for low level functions or use this abstracted ones which are higher level. So depends what how you will do it. If you're gonna write I don't know what would be an, a good example. CCK. CCK. CCK we would be much easier to write uh, based on the, this abstract level uh, layer, uh, but if you would li write something like I don't know FTP uh, interface, in, no, not the interface, for something like for moving files into, into Joomla or something like that, then you can use the the J file uh, uh, function that's in already in the, the Joomla. So it, a little bit, but. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, because Joomla doesn't have this layer. This is the added layer. So, yeah. Yeah. Joomla. Joomla. For, I, I, I'm not really familiar. I'm not really familiar with uh, all the details uh, of uh, Amy's work, but I can answer it by perspective of ACL. Uh, for instance, in the Joomla 1.6. Every ACL is hard coded, so you have really low level calls like, "Is this uh, action allowed?" Uh, what she did is to abstract this, so you have a function asking, for instance, "Is user allowed to view?" And then this function calls Joomla function that answers this. So you can plug in uh, all, all kinds of different uh, ACLs because on the lower level they can do different things and just provide the answer, the right answer to the higher level. Uh, I hope that uh, that answers your question. Okay. And really, if it runs in one six now, it should run in Malajo. You know that that's what we're going to try and make sure happens for sure. But the the work that we've done should not impact that. You know. So, um, as somebody who's starting to work with okay. Okay. Nuku, Thank you, Klaus. Uh, um, it's interesting because it sounds to me like right now, if I'm starting a new uh, Joomla component, that I have the choice of writing it to work uh, on top of the directly on top of the Joomla framework, or on top of the Melagio framework, or on top of Nuku. Correct? Is that is that is that correctly summarize the options that I have right now, targeting which framework I'm going to use, and if and also would the Kua Nuku plugin work within um, within the Malajo environment. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Mala we're not creating a separate framework. We're using the Joomla framework. Right, but you're saying we have to, if we're writing a component, it has to be Malajo aware to use some of these things, correct? Or not? Not necessarily. Oh, okay. So we don't have to, there's nothing different as far as if I'm writing for 1.6, uh, Joomla 1.6, I don't have to do any, there's no li different libraries that I would use or anything when I want to work, make it do better things in, in Milagro. That's not the case. Are you at? Well, that's what I'm asking. Can you, well, can you are install you? Nuku? 
Yeah. I, Are you I, asking if a Joomla 1.6 component can run in Milazu? No, I, you just answered that. I understand okay, that you can. Okay. What I'm asking is if I'm writing a new one, is there hooks or extensions, frame, uh, classes that I can use from Milazu that aren't offered in Joomla? Yes. Right. So when I'm writing the extension, I could write it for Milazu. Yes, you could. Right. Or I could also write it for Nuku. I feel a trap coming. No, I'm just, yes. I'm just, no, no. It's not a trap. No, it's right. a question because we're, we're trying to figure out what yes. platform to build on. And, and can you also like uh, uh, install the Ku plugin into Milajo and run that? Okay. Plugin should work. Module should work. Components should work if they work in one six. And you know we'll we'll work really hard to make sure that that doesn't make me a liar by saying that. Hi. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, comment on um, on picking the the application uh, platform and uh, and give a thumbs up. Uh, following from the sidelines, I think it's a very uh, important decision to stick to the framework and uh, keep that as the core. So uh, I'm not so worried as I used to be. <laughs> so I think that's a very good plan. So uh, thumbs up and uh, keep pushing it out. Uh, looking forward to see what will uh, come out good. of this. You know, I, I was just at CMS Expo, and, and I heard kind of that message a lot from, from users that they're worried. They're seeing Nuku, they're seeing Milajo, they're seeing Joomla, you know, and, and it all looks like we're splitting up, and it, it, it does, and it, it, it is going to get confusing for developers. Where, where do you go? But hopefully the project can start pulling some of this good work back into core, and with these six-month, uh, you know, changes, we can start getting some of this good stuff in core and keep the innovations going into core. You know, and, and that's, that's the goal, even in Linux where you see lots of different applications out there, you know, if there's upstream contributions and they get back into the kernel, that's what benefits everybody. So, you know, it, I think as this innovation continues, we should celebrate the innovation and encourage the project to continue working with developers to pull that GPL code back up and make improvements in core. That's how it's supposed to work. You know, and everyone kind of don't worry about innovation, worry about when you don't see it, and encourage the project to keep working with developers. I mean, I think, it, I think it's going to all work. You know, we, community drives Joomla, and this is how it happens. So let's not really overly worry about it if, peop, if it, developers are sharing their code. Okay. We're done. We're being kicked out. Thank you guys very much.